three of the four random voltages in each cell sections are managed over time by a clock signal. There are three ways you can clock the module, and in order of priority, they are by hand, modulating the gate input of the clock, using an external clock, or using the built-in one. The button works as a normal sample and hold. When a button is pressed, it samples the voltage and keeps it held until it's released. Due to the fact that it has the higher priority, you can also use it to momentarily pause your clock. The gate input modulation is available when the switch of the jack socket on the right of the clock speed pot points to the left. This means that the modulation applied is forwarded to the button. It works with any signal when it goes above plus one volt, so for sure a square wave or a pulse wave are perfect candidates, but you can also use any signal that can go over its threshold, also sine waves. This input lets the applied modulation to work in place of your finger. So for example, you can apply also a very low frequency gate signal to activate and deactivate the clock. Please note that in case you need to stop it by hand, the finger still has the higher priority. Then we can also apply an external clock for sure. This one is the dedicated input, marked with an arrow inside a square. Please note that as soon as the cable is connected, the built-in clock is completely bypassed, so you can also use a dummy cable to switch off the clock in case you don't want to use the button. The last way to clock the random voltages is using the internal clock. The only control you need is its frequency, which increases when turning it clockwise and goes roughly from 0.1 to 60 Hz. You can also apply an external CV to modulate the clock speed. Use the same socket on the right of the clock speed, but this time turn the switch to the right. This means that the modulation applied is forwarded to the clock frequency instead of the button. The clock then goes to the quantized random voltages and to the random sample and hold. Then, the signal also goes to the clock output, which is this one on the center right of the module. The Sapel also features two circuits for random clock generation, two for each section. These are accessible via the socket on the left of the normal clock output. The switch connected lets you choose between these two circuits. If it's up, it means that it's working in additive or modem mode. In this mode, it outputs all the clock generated in addition to other random clocks, which time density depends on the global rate of change of the fluctuating random voltage. You'll notice that as soon as we increase its value, its density increases too, still being random. Keep in mind that also the probability distribution affects the behavior of the fluctuating random voltage. When it said the switch is down, or in subtractive or lesson mode, it outputs the clocks only sometimes. The fluctuating random voltage here is used to open and to close a gate, which filters the incoming clock signals. In this way, the result is a random clock, which is always in sync with the normal one. Have a look to our Vimeo channel to stay updated with new demos, tutorials and new products.